God. Super, super specific to that area. And <laughs> right now, super specific to your screens is this uh, top eight, or no, sorry, um, almost qualifier for top eight match between Jake and Monty. Yeah, of course, we talked about how these two are a menace to anybody who faces them in bracket. Jake, man, this can't, this player has just taken himself all the way to the forefront of here at the 2GG streams, man. You see him in your grand finals. You see him nowhere short of grand finals. He's even taken the crown from my personal favorite Ape man, which, by the way, I hope to see win MSM against Jake at some point. But bias aside, man, Jake is definitely one of those players who's just come all the way around. But Monty, man, he knows I got to oppress this character before this character oppresses me. That's the that's interesting thing is that um, Demon Watch, one of the characters to find uh, facets is that uh, the approach options for Demon Watch are actually relatively a higher commitment. So trying to be the aggressor is actually not necessarily in the Demon Watch playbook. But right. We'll see right now, Monty is trying to give Jake all the business right now. Demon Watch is one of those characters that if you, if you hide down, if you think about like characters as a whole, like, I remember Yu-Gi-Oh! and how there's meta meta decks and anti-meta decks, right? And that's one thing to compare. But when I talk about here in Smash, man, Game & Watch definitely has that anti-meta feeling to him. Like, yeah, that down air to call that Elytra recovery is so good because it's so active all the way through. Game & Watch is that anti-meta pick. And I think Game & Watch is definitely also a, a very strong contender for anti-meta alongside Steve and even characters like Luigi are just strong anti-meta characters. Do you notice that while he just flew into the blast, and Monty has dealt with Minecart with yeah. uh, Rising Aerial so well? Because I think Monty's very well aware of the fact that the Minecart has a set amount of HP, which even staled most of Game Watch's aerials are strong enough to deal with. Oh, I'm surprised Jay didn't go for the double fair there. He could have gotten the spike hit bots of Monty. Maybe he just was a little bit uh, cautious about the facing on that yeah and you, you have to be cautious right sometimes it's better to be safer than sorry and in a matchup against steve dude you gotta be safe all the time rather than sorry because if you're sorry you're effectively losing yeah watch the oh, mash out mm, great di though great di yeah the mash out was good just ugh, i mean oh, when you man. got you can't go for those low recoveries all the time that's the thing about yeah. bo both of these characters you actually can't recover low as much as you'd want to and Jake paying Monty back in kind of a big down tilt kill or down air kill. Driving right now with that F tilt to fair. Oh, <laughs> almost caught the roll. Oh man, I, 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 man, that's that's the I have to respect it, man. But when you're on your last stock, you can't always high roll, man. You got to play your safe. safe, safe game, safe game. Down, double down smash here. That'll do it. Ninety-eight percent here on Monty. Jake, uh, I want to say he's going to take the cake all the way through, man, but we'll see. We'll see. I think that the thing that just really is unfortunate about, like, evening things up against Steve is if they've done their due diligence to mine for diamond, it's like, oh, cool, I got them on the last... Oh, they have diamond. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, big buy cards, that could be enough. Again, Game Watch is one of the lighter characters in the game. I wouldn't have been surprised to see that be the finishing blow. Oh, Jake actually escaped outside of the hitbox area of Uppy right there. Down tilt. Monty having trouble getting back on stage right now. Oh, that was good too. What a stall, and then eventually forcing out the down the down smash, and then punishing him for. It. I think definitely, even if Monty does lose this game, uh, which it's it's in the cards for him to make the comeback. Oh. Honestly, look at the way he's called out that. Ah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, look at the way he's called. Out that. No, yeah. Never mind. I forgot. Like <laughs> that's such a great option select for Steve. It's inc it's like ridiculous. I, I honestly think yeah. it's either the best option select in the game or top two, top three. You know, I I can't think of anything better than powered I mean, minecart or minecart as a whole. It justifies the fact that Steve has such a weak grab setup. You know, I mean, granted, weak relative other tether grabs because in this game, pretty much every character with a tether grab has some kind of busted setup with it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, crazy stuff indeed, man. Uh, also, was, shout you, you were going to say sorry. Oh, no. Do, do the shout out first. I'll, I'll no, I was going to say, like, quick shout out to anybody who remembers playing Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively as a, as a card game. <laughs> or I remember Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively. The only thing I was going to say is I thought that was really well played by Jay to weather Monty's initial, like, storm. Like, Monty was leading most of that game. Yeah, he, he definitely was leading most of that game. Jake adapted, but we talked about how these two characters are just very strong anti-meta characters. I think Alex, Steve, Enderman, Zombie, whatever, man, Steve has a whole point is, 
Uh, we'll just call him Steve, man, because it's one general name for the character. It's a skin that gets a name. Uh, but Steve as a whole, he's definitely anti man. He can there's no other character in this game who has his tools. What a great bucket to reflect that. And that's what I like from Monty last game. He slowly adapted that even if he loses, next game, it ain't gonna be as close as it was for Jake, man. Definitely Monty might be able to take it all the way through. And that's what I hope to see. You know, watch about one of the only characters in the roster that has multiple tools with to deal with minecart and minecart speed. Because yeah. Bucket's like what frame three activation, so mm -hmm. oh, getting caught at the end of the cart, taking the steel fare, but not the spike hit box. So Monty's able to escape by drifting back a little bit. Oh, that was so that was really still tough for Monty. I, I like that mindset, right? You go for fair couple times right you know it starts from above jake tries to just jump right around you he knows he's got to deal with the bomb landing and then he covered that with jab but the problem with that is that your jake has already essentially moved from that area and that's yeah. the crazy thing about jake he's always setting himself for that whiff punish range he can grab you from that range he can punish you with spot dodge forward smash but now it's gonna be oh, monty here yeah. getting the punish on the getup because if he doesn't see the roll or if he does see the roll you know that down smash will cover it. but jake responds right away man this guy is not letting monty have any sort of lead whatsoever monty was able to cook up that ledge trap is a very standard game watch ledge trap but so effective but look at these pick loops Jake putting only 47 on the Game Watch main, but every time he backhands with Diamond Axe, it just feels like the stock's gone. <laughs> stocks, they do be flying, man. They're flying pretty quick. Five, five minutes on the clock, man. Two minutes, but you know both these plays. Fro, do you remember? Do you remember when you played Modern Warfare and you got your 24 kill streak and you get a nuke, right? <laughs> And you just essentially like win the game. That down smash TNT feels like a Modern Warfare 2 nuke. I will lie and say yes just to help complete the metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> and I love you for it. All right, well, we'll see if uh, Monty's gonna love that up B for getting him oh. around Jake because it's been doing see, wonders for him. Did you see Jake was ready for the down air right there? He had the up smash. Yeah. Huge up. <laughs> It was on deck, dude. <laughs> He's like, all right, man, you're gonna stop landing on me one way or another. Oh, again! And right now, I feel like Jake has figured out exactly where he wants to start placing a lot of his approaches, and Monty is just completely on the back foot. Okay, nice from Monty. This is what I like about both of these players, too. They know, let me get the ledge, right? Is the stage safe? No, then I gotta go back to the ledge and find another way around, because if I try to be aggressive on that center stage, I am taking a fat punish, and look at this fat punish we're seeing here from Monty, finally tying things up in terms of stock. Uh, Monty that's is that's just so close, bro. Like, he's so close every time, yeah. and then Jake's lead in terms of percent speaks for itself, but what a punish there on the mine cart. But Jake's able to escape the up air traps that usually befuddle so many other lesser players. Oh, he got the perfect spacing on that. Just turn around F smash. <laughs> Uh, when in doubt, if you're playing Steve, just smash it. <laughs> Honestly, that turnaround, that forward smash is just some crazy range. But also the fact that you can like, you can just do, you can just spot dodge F smash and it's so good for the character, man. Yeah. 